Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another cold, windy Iowa day, and welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today you join me in my front yard with this 79 Fairmont that I bought well over a year ago with the intent of putting back on the road. The only thing that's been missing is time and a few parts, and this week I have a little time. We still gotta figure out the parts. Let's get started. What we have in front of us is a 1979 Ford Fairmont four-door that I bought off the marketplace, I want to say about a year and a half ago. If you follow us on TikTok, you did see I threw a battery in this thing, got it running, and it does move around. Unfortunately, it has a huge, and I mean huge, transmission leak out the front of that C4. Step one is going to be get this thing to the shop and get that fixed, but before we do that, we'll spend a little more time in the cold and give this thing a quick once over while we got some good lighting out here. This is a beautiful baby blue with a white vinyl top, absolute grandma car here. A four door 79 Fairmont. The interior, really not bad. Um, it could use a floor mat down here. There's a little hole in the seat there, but the dash is in great shape. The back seat is in great shape. The headliner is in a shape. She's got 78,000 miles. There's no rust in the rockers. It's very solid for an Iowa car. Nice, simple door panel, simple interior. If you know anything about these, you know that this is actually essentially a Fox body chassis. There's some potential for this platform. They've been pretty popular in the last few years, and I'm glad that I was able to get my hands on one for like 1,500 bucks, I think. It was, it was a hell of a deal. A fan sold it to us, so a uh, big thanks to him for hooking us up with this week's problem. That right there is a factory 302 in this Fairmont. So this is a four door V8 car. Now, being a 79 Fairmont, is it going to be a rocket ship factory? No, absolutely not even a little bit. But does it have potential to be a rocket ship with a little bit of work? Yeah, this thing could be a lot of fun and a pretty decent budget sleeper. In the end, that is the goal for this car. Is that where we're gonna land today? Probably not. I just wanna get this thing up and running and get it on the road. Let's get this sucker on the trailer and get it to the shop and get it to that driving point. Hi, Mook. Hi. Here to help me move a car? Yes, out of the blue section. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and too lazy to get the tractor out. Let's see if the mighty Cushman can do it. All right, low range. Don't need the PTO on. And the key on, test the horn. <laughs> Sweet. There we go. It's been 24 hours, but the Fairmont is up on the lift above a freshly painted floor in the shop. It's nice and bright in here once again. This was getting way too bad, so I decided, you know what, screw it, it's time. I took a day, scrubbed it down, painted it, and it looks excellent, huh, Luke? I think it matches the, the car, actually. In this lighting, it does. It's like blue for some reason. <laughs> Either way, this sucker's up here, and we have a new front main seal for a C4, our suspected problem. Let's go ahead and lift this up and start tearing that transmission out. All right, our Benpack 10,000 pound two post is cranked to max. Let's get underneath this thing and take a look. Oh, first thing I'm seeing, big old catalytic converter shield. Oh, never mind. <laughs> there is not a catalytic converter within that shield, but rather just a pipe. <laughs> When we come back here, yep, I forgot this thing doesn't have an exhaust as it stands. Looks like someone cut it and then ran it into the ground. Oh, she's seen better days. It already has a glass pack on it though. Oh man, it's pinched completely flat right there. Looks like a seven and a half inch forward and rear end. One new brake line. I'd love to see that. New wheel cylinder. New wheel cylinder. Awesome, someone did the brakes on this. The car is pretty damn solid, like very, very damn solid for an Iowa car. There's, this is better than the SN95 that we put a coyote in, which will be coming out soon. What's step one, Moot? The exhaust up here, if I can reach it. I think there's four bolts total, two on each side. Wow, that went way too easy. Oh, look alive. <laughs> someone dropped that. All right, Moose got all those. The 
dang Catholic converter shield. I need a stick. <laughs> what in the hell? I know, I think the mic got a little dripped on. Are you guys okay? <laughs> Performance exhaust removed. What's next, Moop? Starter. Starter. It's dark, but it looks like a big old 20 pounder. All right, Moop. Our starter is strung up out of the way. It is off the bell housing. What's next? Drive shaft. Drive shaft. Let's get that rear U joint undone. <laughs> it wasn't very tight, was it? No, but you still have to hold the drive shaft. I am. <laughs> You know, the bolts I took off on the starter weren't very tight, and one of the ones for the bell housing's literally missing. I wonder if someone attempted to take this trans out, or started taking this trans out, or took this trans out, and maybe there was a bigger problem than the input seal? We're about to find out. Is this foreshadowing? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to subscribe to find out, even though this is the same video, but you should subscribe anyway. Don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> Yay. All right, well, you just stay there for no! an hour. <laughs> Good job, Stink. Hello, transmission. How is there still so much fluid in it? <laughs> yeah, it puked just about 10 gallons. There's a life hack. If you cut an oil jug open on the side, you can use it as a catch pan. And then it's got a nice little nozzle to even dump it out when it's full. And a handle. Stocks. You want to know some other life hacks, Moot? Okay. The Boltster. Oh. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Boltster. We've been using this particular one in the shop for well over a year now, and you can see it's taken some abuse, but it does not care. It is still as good as new. This is a silicone bolt organizer tray that allows you to put all of your bolts from this project. For this one example, I'm doing them in order that we took them off, starting here, and I will go down. Or if you have something like a timing cover and you want to keep all your bolts organized, you can draw out the pattern of the timing cover in the silicone mat. All their products are chemical resistant, heat resistant, and come with a one year warranty. They have their original boltster. They have their boltster tray, which has spots for bigger bolts smaller bolts, even smaller bolts, and of course just a generalized silicone tray. And they have a couple nifty attachments for contractors and people who are working on the job that clip on your belt and carry all your bits and other small bolts around. Check these guys out, bolster.com, and if you use the code shown on screen right now, you will get a discount that is exclusive to Junkyard Digs viewers. Big thanks to them for helping us out at the shop. Let's get back to work. What do you say, Mook? What's next? Oh, wait for drips. Wait for drips, okay. Probably torque converter. I get the stance. <laughs> I might be kind of small for this. Oh my lord. Okay, so they didn't make it this far into the operation. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I need a bigger leverage. All right, we did just one step larger. There we go. Three more. Next up, Moot, transmission lines. Really no particular order, you just gotta get all of these things. While Moot gets the trans lines, we will also have a vacuum line right there. You can see him hanging off, just pop him out of the accumulator. An electrical plug-in or 12, depending on what kind of trans you have. The kick down, which is already disconnected. The shift linkage, which I disconnected and took the bracket off right here. Sitting over there. The only thing left for connection should be the speedometer cable, which is back here on the tail where you can't really see. Looks like just a 3 8 bolt, pretty simple stuff. After that, these guys right here and our bell housing bolts. And this sucker is already ready to come out of the car. This has been a very easy transmission pull. Trans mount. Trans mount. Hold. Thank. Nice. All right, Moop. Now the fun part, bell housing bolts. The biggest trick for these sometimes is to buy yourself a whole bunch of Harbor Freight extensions and come in from way back here and reach over the top of the trans and get those upper bell housing bolts. We'll get these suckers out and get ready to pull it. All right, everything's unbolted. We've got our Harbor Freight uh, Transmission jack here. These aren't great, but they are all I have. Chances are, same case scenario for a lot of you guys. The biggest problem with pulling an engine in this manner, if you're in a driveway or something, 
is not getting it off the block and down, but then getting the transmission out under the car because you have your whole height of your bell housing on top of this. So your car has to literally be this high in the air. And right now, this doesn't even reach. So I actually have to lower the lift below its lowest uh, safety lock. Touching? Uh, yep, it's touching. Yep. Now, bolts get the cross member out the trans should in theory be free ideally you want to support the motor too to keep it from drooping but sometimes you can get away with not doing that let's see if today is one of those times you also ideally put this magical bullshit chain over the trans and then you know lock it down into the cradle here Okay, got our chain hooked up here. It should be all good to go. I'm gonna lower this down a little more. So one of these days I'll buy a nice, big, like don't have to put it on the ground transmission jack. You know what I mean? Yeah. One of these days. We should do it today. It, it's not today. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, that was the easiest transmission I've ever removed. Well, that was some textbook bullshit. <laughs> that never goes that well. Can you go hit the up button and the lift for me, Moot? Yeah. Tell you what, I would never do that if that wasn't a Ben Pack product that I trust my life with. Don't do that at home, kids. Well, there we go, Moot. That was like, what, a leisurely 45 minutes to get an automatic <laughs> trans out? Are you kidding me? Yeah. This, yeah, this is the part where a lift is awesome, is getting this out under the car, because otherwise you'd have to get the car, granted this goes down to about here, but you'd have to get the car this high in the air to get it out from the tunnel, which, remember, is recessed up into the floor. Keep that in mind when you're getting ready to start your transmission driveway pull project. Let's, uh, first of all, take this thing probably down to the car wash, get a couple cans of gunk, clean it up, and then figure out where this leak is coming from, as you can see already. Pretty sure it's inside this bell housing, which is the main seal back there, because it only leaks when it's running and the pump is running. When it's running. All right, we're back from the car wash. We got this thing all, well, I don't want to say all polished up, but uh, the majority of the poop is gone. How about that? We got some words here. What do you think it says, Mook? Probably pish. Probably pish? Yeah, that's a good guess. These are might be manufacturing marks here, but I do know that like there were signs of someone having been in this transmission before, right? as we were taking it apart, bolts were different directions and stuff. And that right there is a national seal, which is definitely not an OEM brand. It's an O'Reilly's brand seal. So I don't necessarily see anything wrong with it, which is a little concerning. It's kind of a pitch okay. move, don't you think? It's wiggly. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stare at this for a while. We'll be back. Well, we didn't have to stare at it long to find something. <laughs> I don't know if this is related to our problem or not, but uh, as you can tell, the entire bell housing on this trans is loose. Except for that one, probably because it has weight on it right now. I don't know what that tells me, but that is interesting. All right, I talked to Wyatt a bit and got our old seal and our new seal next to each other, and he pointed out a few things that turned out to be quite true. Uh, this seal, we don't think this is even the right style, nevertheless a cheap one. you notice it's just one sealing surface right here that's smooth. Our new one has a whole different shape to the seal. It is much, much stiffer. And as you see these little lines, those are called sipes. And what they do is as that pump rotates, or that uh, torque converter rotates, these act as little veins and keep the fluid from flowing out. So seeing that is good, because that means this should hopefully fix our problem. All right, tippy, tip, tippy tap. My little toy hammer. Trying to be careful because I don't have a seal driver the right size. There it is, Moot. Sitting in there nice and pretty, nice and flat, even all the way around. So let's hope that fixes that and move on to the bottom end. You know, the last time I ever touched a C4 actually was this truck. Probably the first vehicle on the channel. 
if you scroll way back, you want to see some skinny young Kevin. I put a shift kit in my F100, which Dash really needs fixed this summer, hopefully. But I accidentally bought two of them, and I sent Mook up on top of the office. Is there anything in a box that says Transmax up there? Yeah. Pro reprogramming kit. Hey, that's a shift kit. Yeah. Bring that sucker down. Let's put a shift kit in this, Mook. Catch it. No! <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. Do, 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 do. Right, Mook? It's pretty obvious. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Looks nice in here. That guy goes right next to him. This is the long boy. He's on the filter. This one. This one. And this one. So that right there is our valve body. That is the brains of the transmission. This is what tells everything to do stuff. So this right here is our intermediate band. This is our reverse band over here. The intermediate is adjusted by this. The reverse band is adjusted by this down here. Uh, those adjustments control band pressure or something along that line. This is our uh, kick down. This is our shift selector McGee 3000. This is a drum probably full of clutches and so is that one. I really don't know. There's some gears somewhere. I don't know. I, I'm not gonna pretend to be a professional transmission person because I'm not. I don't know a ton about automatic transmissions. Usually when it comes to this stuff, besides shift kits, pretty simple instructions. But when it comes to rebuilds, I usually hire this done because those people know a lot, and it's worth spending my money for their expertise so that I have a reliable transmission. With that being said, let's potentially make this one unreliable. I'll get the drill, you get the hammers. Good, I like hammers. We're just gonna magically separate these two now, and everything will stay where it's supposed to. Mmm, look at that nice dirt. Now, there is a number of plastic and steel balls and springs. Uh, keep an eye on those. Don't just start flinging stuff around. You are working with the brain of your transmission right now. Uh, just take your time. High attention to detail. Everything should hopefully come out okay. We're hecked. Yicky dirty. All right, Mook. Now that we've got our valve bodies separated, there is another half here. This bolt hold this separator plate on with a gasket in between. You need to identify on a C4 which valve body you have. I have a B style here in front of me. And then after this point, I'm going to follow all the instructions, drill out the holes I need to with the supplied drill bit, replace the springs, remove some balls, move some balls around, stuff like that until these instructions are complete. I'll go over them again. And if everything's right, we'll get this reassembled and ready to go back in the car. Look at it, Mook. Brains. According to our instructions, this guy and this guy need drilled out to point one one zero. Triple checking, yes. What is your deal? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> We're just gonna ignore that. <laughs> This thing just tried to kill itself. Okay. That's one. Double checking. Away she goes. Throw this rag away immediately so I don't get metal back into my valve bodies. Got a little bit of a burr on each of those I want to clean up, but once that's done, our separator plate's good to go. Now, on our lower plate, we have a ball here, which will retain, but I'm going to remove these all to clean this up a little bit. Uh, we have a ball here, which we will be getting rid of, and we have a ball here, which is missing. That works out, because there's not supposed to be one there. Now I need to rinse this down and reinstall this one plastic ball. Now, I should mention, this is not the same for every trans kit. I'm just showing you guys this to show what it might look like yeah, when you do your own. This specific kit 
is the 40-2 reprogramming kit by Transco. This is not a manual valve body kit. This is a kit that allows drive to operate normally, but it will allow you to jump into any gear when you select it. So if you're doing 70 and you pull it down into one, it's gonna go into one and parts are gonna go everywhere. But this will also give us shorter shift times and less heat in the transmission, less wear on the clutches and extend the trans life itself. Now, is that totally necessary for what we're doing for this car right now? No, not even a little bit. Have I had this box sitting around for five years and we need the runtime for this video? You betcha. Moral of the story, whatever kit you get is probably going to be different, but this is what mine is like. Is this a maze you can solve when you're done? I'll tell you what, it'll be amazing if I solve this <laughs> and it works when I'm done. The other one did. Actually, I lied. When I put that truck together, at first it only had first gear for like two days and then it came back. Actually, that's not even true. I drove all the way to town and then after a first gear pull, it just stayed there. Never did figure that one out. All right, she's all clean. Mook, don't panic, but we're out of brake clean. The last thing left to do to this lower is take this little metal stick and set him right there, apparently. I guess that does something. Now we're going to take our gasket and our separator plate and put them together and make sure there's not one single hole that's covered. That's good to me. How about you, Mook? I can't see anything. All right, sweet. And that one bolt that holds the side in can be reinstalled. You're doing can so good. Snap on <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> Apparently, I can get new hog rings for these, and I need to, I guess. All right, the easy part's done. On to the complicated stuff. We got to replace some valves, springs, and stuff, and I don't even know. Step one, though, is going to be acquire our balls. All right, Mook? No comment. Step two, there's a plug right here that gets removed and discarded if equipped. On top of that, we need to remove the one to accumulator spring as well if equipped. There's our cap. Yeah, this little bent piece of rod holding it in, the cap. And then the accumulator. And last but not least, the spring. Discard that spring and reinstall the rest to float around freely, I suppose. Assume that's correct and works off magic and pressure now instead of a spring. And then sit back and question if that's why my old trans got stuck in first. So this is the back out valve right here, apparently, according to these instructions. That's an optional spring you may not have. Oh, and that is the cutback valve, and I need to put new springs on either of those. This is going to be a white one and this is going to be an orange one. Alright, there's our new orange spring in the cutback valve. Good luck in there, whatever you're supposed to do. And here's our new white spring in the back out valve. Don't know what any of that does, but it's done. Knock that roll pin out of the throttle boost valve. Okay, this goes on for a while. I'm just going to finish it at this point. And when the valve body is back together, we'll put it in the drains. I think you get the idea. Alrighty, our valve body is reassembled with a shift kit for better or worse, and it is back in the transmission. We've got two bolts holding it in right now because I need to verify that our kick down and our shifter are both working. The kick down, you got to just get in front of a pin back there, and he should be springy. That verifies he's working. And the shift lever goes right between the two glass tabs of that. Uh, shift fork valve thing. The way to verify this one works is pretty easy. You can look at the back of the valve body here. Oh, you see that little guy? That is the valve itself moving back and forth. And that verifies that everything's hooked up. Put the last of these bolts in, get everything torqued down to spec, get our new gasket in there, bolt our pan back on, and this sucker's ready to go back in the car. I've got our pan gasket on top of the pan, got our double RTV, all our bolt holes are lined up. It is time to go ahead and put this sucker on. And for a personal reminder that I did this, I even put the Transgo sticker on. I'm gonna need two hands for this. Yeah, we'll be back in a bit. Well, she's all reassembled and ready to go back into Fairmont. Best of all, help has arrived to help me put it back in. Howdy. Ezra, it's been like a week I since know, right? I've seen you on the this channel. This never happens. Usually it's a yearly thing and yeah. it's like, we're getting it in, you know? Ready to uh, bench press the C4 into a car? 
It looks better than a C6. That is true. God, <laughs> is that true. So the trickiest part of getting this in is going to be aligning not only our studs on the bell housing, but these studs on the torque converter. Unfortunately, and I've dealt with this a hundred times on that truck, Ford put studs on these on some of their C4s instead of nut plates or nuts like GM and everyone else used, where you can spin this until it aligns. These all have to mesh at the same exact time. It's a nightmare. Keeper all in there, but oh, hang on. Forward, ye. <laughs> okay. All right, so we need to move our torque motor a little bit this way. That's maxed out. Ah, damn it, we need another inch. All right, well, I'll bring the lift down to ya. Oh, did I nail the torque motor stuff? Oh, I meant. No. <laughs> Much better floor than I did at my parents' one stall garage. Ironically, since this is like eight year old concrete. Oh, there it is. Wow. Like, yeah, the passenger side needs to go up. I believe so. That's what it looks like over here, yet. yeah. Oh, that's real close. Yeah, you're getting right there. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, poop. Where'd the torque converter bolt go? I guess I rotated it right out of alignment. <laughs> What's the chance this motor is low enough compression I can turn it by hand? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! So it's actually better to own shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, smog engine. Now our passenger's too high. I hate this stupid engine or torque converter design. It won't let them come together until all the studs align. God, that is so oh, special. There it went! Wow. What? <laughs> you just gotta tell them you don't like them. The, the one stud is aligned. We're on the dowels. I'm gonna go get a bolt. <laughs> Nobody move. This was the easiest transmission I've ever pulled for an automatic. And it might be the easiest studded Ford transmission I ever put back together. The fact that both of those might happen <laughs> means it's not gonna work when I put fluid in it. <laughs> it's gonna explode in three miles. A tiny bit of gapage there. You think you need to go up and down or something? I don't know. Um, Let me see your flashlight. Yeah. If a guy like wiggled and jiggled, I think that bolt could get tighter with your fingers, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think we're we need to do this. There you go, try that. Oh wow. We oh, like, even the studs through. We got like half inch to go. We yeah, actually just pulled that off. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Um that's in. It's not in, but it's started to the point that we can throw the cross member in and get this back up in the air so we don't have to roll around on the ground. I don't even have any advice to give you guys. Just good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the crank with a 516s to align your flex plate with the torque converter and try to guess where that is before you start going together. And get a good floor jack. If you don't have a good floor, put a piece of plywood down or something so it has something to roll on. That's my best advice. If you and good luck. If you can do it on a gravel driveway, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> For the next 17 minutes and 38 seconds, Ezra and I set to work installing our cross member, drive shaft, connections, everything the trans needed to work in the car. All right, there we go. With that, our transmission is completely installed and ready to go for tomorrow morning. That took like 25 minutes, maybe, with two people. Yeah, was that was awesome. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to day two of the Fairmont, which sounds ridiculous because the transmission's been out, fixed, shift kit installed in back in all on the first day which if you're familiar with the channel is usually not at all something we can pull off today it is apparently winter again and we're supposed to get two to four inches of white bs on the ground out there along with which there's salt on the road and i don't want to drive this car on any salt because it's avoided it this far in its life why ruin it now so with that being said i guess we're gonna take a little more time and finish up a little details on this thing the first of which ezra has started on over here we pulled the old exhaust out of the car, what was left of it. <laughs> we cut the ends off this big old glass pack. He's gonna weld some new ends onto it and then we're gonna start constructing ourselves an exhaust. Okay. Um. <laughs> I was just planning our exhaust route. I was like, man, I could fit the whole, whole freaking muffler right here. This is gonna be awesome. I was still trying to figure out why the bolt holes didn't quite line up when we put it back together. And then I realized, this sucker's in upside down. <laughs> <laughs> we 
guess I'll get something to support the strands and fix this. Hey, we all make mistakes. Well, here it is, our final design. We reused the white pipe. This is our recycled glass pack that came out of the car. And then a section of the tubing from up front as well. And we have the perfect side exit performance sleeper exhaust. That's probably going to be way too loud. Hey, if it's recycled, does that mean it's emissions too? Yeah, this is eco-friendly. It's recycled. Yes. I like it. <laughs> there it is. It's all bolted up. We need to just find ourselves something for a hanger back Dude, here. Dude, you could go like nut right off of this. That's not a bad idea. I'll just go over. Because then it's fully unboltable for the next guy or whoever works on this. Let's figure you. something out for that. Yeah, me. <laughs> like us in two hours when the trans doesn't work. We don't go there. We don't talk about it. <laughs> well, there it is. There's our exhaust hanger. A nut and a lock washer and a random piece of bracket, which I think actually is an exhaust hanger for something else. On the bottom of a seat bolt. And then hit it with a hose clamp. Done. And it even just clears the lift arm so that we can lift this up just fine. Well, I suppose the next step is fill it with trans fluid once it gets here. That was it's ironic here. timing. Wow. All right. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't hear dripping yet. <laughs> oh, it doesn't drip till it runs. Oh, damn. If it drips now, we got a new problem. <laughs> the AC still spins. Hell, I bet it even works. It's got a newer master on it and a newer aluminum radiator. So, I don't know. Someone, someone's done some work to this car. Yeah, but it's like normal work, like not orange RTV and weird shitty aftermarket parts that yeah. are on the shelf, like actually did someone, a decent job. Yeah, someone was driving this for sure. Yeah. We'll throw a few quarts in here and then see if she leaks. And if she doesn't, we'll top her off the rest of the way. All right, let's see what she does. It's been a number of months since it's ran, so it might crank for a little while to build up some fuel, but go ahead, sir. Okay, give her a couple pumps here. No sign of fuel yet. Try her again. Oh, okay. Well, there's a sign of fuel, I suppose. <laughs> and it runs. Now, is it puking everywhere? Coke open apparently. Dude, it runs it has good. a good smell. It does. I like it. All right, put on the brake, go for drive. Right. Nothing? Good drive. We need more fluid. Okay, <laughs> that answers that. All right, two more quarts. Let's see what it does now. Go for a drive. There we go, they engaged. Let off the brake. Holy crap, look at that. I don't see anything. We did it! You got reverse? Reverse! Hell yeah. Dude, holy crap. Oh, it's not even that loud. Yeah, the choke's hanging closed right now. I can, my eyes are telling me that it's rich. <sighs> Burning a little bit in here. <laughs> Cologne. <laughs> we got a tire. A jack. Hmm. A thermostat housing. Oh, dude, does this carpet come up? How is the, oh. Ah. Well, that's where our spare's supposed to, there's another spare. This metal in here looks incredible. There's not even holes. Down in the kick panels. Holy cow, this thing is nice. Damn. Let's uh, let's top off all our fluids and do that stuff. Get the vacuum out, clean this thing up a little bit, and wait for the snow to melt, I suppose, and go for a drive. Got the D-germ out, trying to get rid of the stains. Whoa, that one actually pulled right out. Holy shit. Dude, <laughs> I was like, ah, we'll see what actually happens here. That is gone. That looks so much better. I'm sold. Dude, it is. Looking real nice in here. This dash, not even cracked. She puts the gur in swinger. <laughs> well, there she is. She still needs a bath. 
get some of this stuff off. Our interior is in excellent shape. It's nice and clean now. Back seat is minty fresh. The sucker's done for now. Take it for a drive and figure it out. Enjoy it. Which to do that, it needs to not be snow on the ground outside and soaking wet. So we'll be back when that is the case. Morning, stinky. Morning, stink. It's been a few days, but I'm finally comfortable with the roads that I can take this out without getting a bunch of salt on it. This thing should, maybe, be ready to go. So we're going to hop in, do a lap around town, take her out to the farm, and I'll have myself a new good daily for once it warms up. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Let's find out. <laughs> Someone did that. Hey. Push the button. No, no, push the button. Thank you. Wait. Stay here for five days, and only leaked four drops. That might be a new record. Here we go. Kevin, this will be my first time riding in this car. Same. Let's not have a backup vehicle and drive it all the way home. Okay. What if you go wrong? Nothing. <laughs> It's super quiet for being essentially straight piped with a glass bag. It's also super blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so lightweight and it steers so easy. And it's so bright in here. The blue helps, but the large amount of glass does too. This thing is amazing. This would be an excellent first car if you're looking to get into classics. Find a four-door Fairmont. You're going to be cheaper than two doors and probably more plentiful and apparently incredible. And it's a Fox body platform, so there's a huge market of aftermarket support for these cars and i mean 302 a t5 would plug right in which i don't know maybe it'll be episode two mook we'll see i might like it too much as it is and just drive the wheels off the dang thing oh there's second already third boom shift kit works <laughs> <laughs> this is the easiest episode we've ever filmed how's your mirror work good good there's no uh there's no dimmer on it Wait. One thing to look out for in these, if you get a 80 and 81, they had the 255, which was a severely de-stroke 302. They're terrible, so maybe maybe avoid those two years or plan on putting a different motor in. Speedometer works, odometer works. Look at that. This thing is incredible. Let me turn the heat on. KASI, Ames, and iHeartRadio stations. Yep. Wow. All right, let's open her up, see what she do. Actually, that ain't terrible. No? I, that's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mook, this thing is a cruiser. It is a little small in here, and not being bucket seats, it, just, it potentially, I'd say, a little less comfortable than a Fox, but it's pretty nice. It tracks down the road perfectly straight. Like I can let go of the wheel and it'll stay perfectly in its line. Look, here's a semi to prove it. It stays right there. It's smooth, it's super quiet, even with thick glass back. I mean, I can whisper to you and you can still hear me. Just for one, the moth is behind you. Oh. Also, it came with a friend apparently. <laughs> they have a moth up here. We've got 78,517 miles. This, this is that conundrum where we're like, man, do we put a bunch of work and power into this car, or do we just drive the wheels off and leave it as is, which is perfect. It is really nice. Right it now. is really nice. Heck, man. Heck. Heck. Do you want out with that? He's having a party. I'll let you oh. out, but you're not gonna like it. It's 23 out there today. Here he goes. He's committing to it. Okay, well, he's dead now. There with him. Yeah. Goodbye, friend. The uh. suspension is quite soft. It does leave a little to be desired in the body roll category. <laughs> Did you see your head on the window? Oh, nope. yes.
Well, there you have it, folks. That is our quick and easy revival of the 79 Ford Fairmont. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know I did, simply for the fact that we didn't have to struggle very much this week. And I have a car that's going to be a great daily this summer. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. We'll see you right here next time for another episode of Junkyard Digs. What are we doing next week, Mook? Booger Jack! We are doing a Junkyard Mook episode next week. With that being said, make sure you check out Junkyard Mook's channel here on YouTube. It's called Junkyard Mook. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. War!